if you're interested in lupus and drug development, um, there's really been a renaissance. There's been some encouraging progress uh, in the treatment of lupus nephritis. And, um, you know, we'd love to hear sort of more about what's available and take a peek into the future on and the horizon on what uh, could be coming down the pike here in the next few years. So with that, Dr. Roven, uh, could you talk a little bit about the two new approvals uh, and then where you see treatment going with lupus nephritis, say, you know, in the future? Great. Thank you very much, Al. This to me has been as, as a person who's been invested in lupus research for really the last 15 years uh, and more in, in laboratory, um, this has been a very exciting couple of years. So uh, as we've been sort of saying, two drugs have been approved for lupus nephritis. This has never happened before. We've never had an approved therapy for lupus nephritis. One, I think the lupus community is pretty familiar with, and that's uh, belumamab. Belumamab is a drug that targets a growth factor and survival factor called BLIS or BAF uh, for B cells. And several years ago, it was approved for SLE, um, but not for patients who had severe and active lupus nephritis. We started looking at the data and seeing what else the data could tell us. And we presented some of these uh, data at last year's kidney meetings and, and rheumatology meetings. But beyond the idea of getting a remission, uh, which is a response where the proteinuria, which is the leakage of protein into the urine, the blood cells leaking in the urine uh, decrease, and the kidney function stabilizes. So about five, six years ago, we started a trial called BLISS-LN, in which we added belumamab to the standard of care therapies uh, that we use uh, routinely uh, that were just described uh, for lupus, and then uh, followed the patients along for two years to see if there was an improvement in the number of complete remissions uh, that occurred in the patients giving the belumamab. We found that the patients treated with belumamab actually had a lower flare rate. And flare means that you, you get a remission, your, your kidney disease becomes quiet, and then at some point, for whatever reason, it becomes active again. So preventing flares is really important in the context of lupus nephritis in terms of decreasing damage in the future and maintaining kidney function. Okay, the next uh, exciting development was the approval of the drug called voclosporin. Voclosporin is a, a drug that we call a calcineurin inhibitor, and these drugs tend to target the T cells, and T cells are now another part of the immune system. Uh, again, they're important for host defense and protecting us, but they can also produce things that can harm various organs, in, including including the kidney. Now, this trial was a one-year trial, and we were able to show a significant difference again in the number of complete kidney responses in the patients on the voclosporin arm of the trial compared to those receiving placebo. Okay, so that's sort of the background, and, th and that's, that's very exciting. And that led to an approval uh, by the FDA in, I believe, January of 21. Beyond that, uh, we have an exciting panel of other drugs that are being trialed right now in lupus. And, and I think the very remarkable thing about these new drugs is that the idea is we have to modulate the immune system. And in the past, that was done by killing all the immune cells with cytotoxic agents or mycophenolate, and things like that. Um, now, we want to very selectively go in and hit the parts of the immune system with our therapies that we think are causing the damage to the organs in patients with lupus. And so I think that the, the lay of the land, if you will, over the next, I'm going to even say five to 10 years, is remarkable with the number of drugs. And I'm going to make a little prediction. I think we're going to continue to see this upswing of approved drugs by the FDA and then as we have more and more drugs to use that are not sort of the old ones that we've been using for such a long time, we're going to be able to really individualize the therapy for each specific lupus patient based on how their disease is behaving, uh, even at the molecular level or maybe even at the genetic level. So we'll really have precision medicine uh, to treat lupus patients individually. 
Wow. Well, if that happens, that would be music uh, to the lupus community's ears for sure, uh, Dr. Roven. And so we appreciate uh, that very much. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe and well.